Murray at Southern Art Gallery and today we are going to be talking about color in the first of our uh, series on color theory and color mixing and today we're going to talk about reds so there's so many different of different colors and it. it has yellows and oranges and violets and browns and um, so if you're doing a um, if you're trying to get a lightness of something it's never just one red there it's if you want it to look lifelike especially with nature you have to use a, a whole a range of reds so with that being said I just I put I put this out because this is just the most gorgeous red this is my very favorite red so here we have I swatched out every red on my palette so that we can look at the different characteristics of the different reds now when I talk when I say reds and in watercolor when we refer to red we include generally include pinks within the reds because if you wash out a red it's going to lean toward an underlying pink and if you darken a red it's either going to um, lean to a brown or a violet which would be kind of to the blue side and if it leans to the rust or the brown or the yellow or the orange it's leaning to the warm side so when you have a color it can be either warm or cool based on which direction it goes on the color wheel so if you have a red and it leans toward the violet then it's going to be a cooler color toward the blue and if it leans toward orange or yellow it's going to be a warmer version of that color and so when you hear people talk about a split primary palette with two reds a warm red and a cool red then that's what they're referring to on here you can see opera which is just an incredibly vivid pink and that that's by Sennelier this is da, uh, da Vinci's version it's called Opus and this is a PR 122 and their opera is a PR 881 1 when you get into these very vivid pinks they tend to be fugitive so it's very important that you read the labels on your paints or online before you purchase them to find out which pigments are fugitive and which pigments and fugitive means that they fade basically so you have to use colors like this very sparingly and be aware that they may fade especially if they're in direct sunlight they're pretty much guaranteed to fade here you have a rose let me just use my to point this out you have quinacridone rose by m graham and PV19 is a very common pigment name and you'll see it uh, many places in many different colors and in many variations so you cannot always assume if it's a PV19 that it's going to be quinacridone rose because it could very well be something else so you have to be aware of that and then when you push your pink a little bit to the mid-range somewhere in between warm and cool you get quinacridone red which is a PR209 quinacridone magenta which is a PR122 which is is um, just a gorgeous color gorgeous color and this one is made by core this was an M Graham color this is permanent rose and I believe it's a Winsor Newton color I'm not positive I don't use that anymore this is scarlet by uh, may marie blue pigment is 254 and this is pyrrole by m graham it has the same pigment but you can see between the two pigments there's a slight variation this is cadmium red which is pr 108 gorgeous color 
but I try to stay away from the cadmiums because they are um, a little bit on the opaque side and they're somewhat toxic. This is a cadmium red purple, which has the same pigment, which is a beautiful color by Holbein, but as you can see, it's also a bit on the opaque side. This is permanent red by May Marie Blue. PR177. Here's a PR177. This is one of my very favorite colors. It's called Alizarin Gold and it's by Da Vinci. And you can see how it has a brown, brown tinge to it. So it makes a really good warm red for your palette. Here's another PR206, which is Alizarin Crimson Deep, which is by Sennelier. This has, this is a alizarin crimson. You have to be careful and get permanent alizarin crimson or get an alizarin crimson that has a quinacridone in it. Check, you have to be very careful because many of the alizarin crimsons are fugitive and they will not stand up. So uh, PR, I think it's 88 or 86 is the worst, one of the worst ones. So you have to be careful with that. Here is a, a brown red called Brown Matter. This is made by Turner, and that is PR175. This is a Perilene Maroon, which is by Holbein. This is one of my favorite colors for a brown red. It's PR179. This is naph Naphthamide Maroon by Daniel Smith which is a little more on the um, Bordeaux side, leans to be a little more uh, maroon. This is Quinacridone Rust, which is, as you can see, much more on the orange side of red. This is Burnt Sienna, which is PR 101. There's several versions of, this is Burnt Sienna Deep by Da Vinci. There are several versions of um, of uh, burnt sienna made with different pigments and you just have to decide which one you like the best. This is a very popular color called Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet by Daniel Smith. It's a PR206 also. So these two are the same pigment but as you can see they look different by different manufacturers. I threw this orange in because it's basically the only orange on my palette. It's Transparent Pyrrole Orange by Core. It's PO71. Here's another alizarin crimson by da vinci now if you look at this this also has the pv19 which is the same pigment up here but it's just a darker version of it and this leans this is an alizarin crimson that leans more to the blue side versus this alizarin crimson which leans more to the brown side if you can see the difference there here's another pv19 by da vinci it's called red rose deep and you can see how pink that is Here's your Quinacridone Red by Da Vinci, PR209. Just the same as the Quinacridone Red by uh, M. Graham up here. But you can see there's a slight difference in those, not a lot. Here's Red Rose Deep by May Mar Marie Blue, which is also a uh, PR177. Here's the Da Vinci Red, which is a PR254. This pigment, that's Da Vinci Red. This PR254 or Pyrol by M. Graham, generally PR254 is a Pyrol color. It's a very good warm red for your palette also. So you can see it right there. And down here we have the violets. <clears throat> we have Da Vinci Violet here by Da Vinci. It's PV23, which is just a beautiful color. Here's mineral violet, well, let me skip over here. This is dioxazine violet by Core, and these two are the same pigment. The Da Vinci's a bit more um, vibrant. And here's the Theo violet by Winsor Newton, which is a red violet. And I put the Verzino violet in here because this is really um, equivalent to quinacridone magenta which was up here so you have a choice of quinacridone magenta that's a core color everybody makes quinacridone magenta this is May Marie Blue's version of quinacridone magenta and we looked at opus this is quinacridone violet by M. Graham which is also a red violet that's PV15 
This is a color that really sh probably should be more on the blue palette, but I love this color. It's called Lavender. It's by Holbein, but it has three pigments in it. That's the only um, disadvantage of that. And one of those is white, which makes that slightly opaque. This is Mineral Violet by M. Graham, which is just a truly beautiful mineral color. So as you can see with reds, you have many choices. You can have a pink red, you can have a brown red, you can have a blue, bluer red, you can have a, a oranger red. So you really have to decide, you know, just based on preference and what you like to paint. You know, if, you, if you're a botanical painter, then, and like I am, you know, I use a lot of different versions of red in one painting. But my favorite, very favorite reds are the alizarin gold. I love this cadmium red purple, even though it's slightly opaque. I really like pyrrole a lot. That's a really good pigment to choose. I really like, uh, I like Da Vinci's alizarin crimson, but I also like the Sennelier, which is a bit browner. I love uh, Perlene Maroon. And I love all the violets. You know, I, I think they're just such beautiful colors. Now you can mix these, and we'll do, when we get into mixing, we will do a video on how to mix these so that you don't have to purchase all these colors. But basically, just choose a warm and a cool and a dark is what I would say. If you have a dark red, a warm red, and a cool red, then I think that's an excellent start and I think you can paint, you can get most combinations that way. I would, I would have a burnt sienna though, which really isn't a red, but I put it in here because it just fits with this um, group, but some kind of a burnt sienna, either some kind of a, a quinacridone rust color or a brownie, something with a, a lot of people like quinacridone burnt scarlet. You just need some kind of a brown red to um, add to your collection. So that's what I have on reds and we will discuss um, blues and yellows and greens and all of those other combinations in future videos. If you care to subscribe, please do so and join me again for the next video.